There's a lot of young people here. Have you guys heard of Surat Al-Kahf? Sometimes those who slept in the cave are, are referred to as the seven sleepers. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, a little bit about these young men. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, "Innahum fitiyatun amanu." They were a group of young men who believed. And here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is giving us this information about them, this description of them being young men, as a way to point out what wonderful individuals they were. At a young age, they believed and they done the right thing. Normally, a lot of young people are they individuals who stand up for their religion. They call to Allah as if they're doing da'wah, they're memorizing the Quran. You will find pockets of young men doing so. But when we look at it from the perspective of a ratio, it's far less. Innahum fitiyatun amanu bi rabbihim wa zidnahum huda. They believed in their Lord and Allah Azza wa Jal increased them in guidance. We're all crying out for guidance. Look at this verse. Amanu bi Rabbi wa zidnahum huda. And Allah Azza wa Jal increased them in guidance. You need to show Allah Jalla fi ula that you really badly want it. You show Allah Azza wa Jal how badly you want it. Wa zidnahum huda. Allah will increase you in guidance. Allah says, if Allah, He sees that goodness in your heart, He'll give it to you. These young men, some of the Mufassirin, they mention that they came from very wealthy families. The upper class of society they were. Annually, they would have a festival where they would come together and start invoking their idols. They would begin to what? Invoke their idols. They would commit a shirk. These young men, one by one, they left this temple that they were in or this festival that they attended and they walked outside. One leaves, the other leaves, the third, and so on and so forth. As they are standing outside, they began to get very paranoid. Why is he outside? Why is the other one outside? One of them was brave enough now to approach the other. And they began to speak and found out that they are all on the same page. They all left that festival because of the discomfort they felt around these idols that they used to invoke besides Allah Jalla Fi. So then it began to spread amongst the people, amongst the community, that these young men have now gone against the religion of their forefathers. It eventually reached the king in their time, who the Mufassirun, the scholars of Tafsir mentioned, was a tyrannical, barbaric, bloodthirsty individual. So he called them into his office and he began to question them. And they stood up to whatever he was saying. And Allah tells us, إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ They stood up to him saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, لَن نَدْعُوَ مِن دُونِهِ إِلَهَا We will not invoke, call on to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. When we make dua, it will be directly to Allah. لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَنْ شَطَطَ If that is the case, or if we were to actually now engage in this act of shirk, we would have indeed fallen into something that is extremely grave. These young men, in the midst of the worst possible sin, what did they do? They detached themselves. صح? And not only that, they began to defend their religion, stand up to the sole purpose of what they were created for. And then it doesn't stop there. In front of the king, they stuck to their beliefs and they were steadfast. So after the back and forth that took place, he gave them an ultimatum to renegate, to leave their religion. Sometimes we may find ourselves in these kind of situations where we are bombarded with information. It may not always be by force, but it is done through the different means and avenues that have been created by the devil through the shayateen al-ins in order to lead you astray. A lot of the time, my brothers and my sisters, the shaitan is not going to tell you, look, I'm the devil. This is haram, go and do it. The lot of tricks and traps under his sleeve, like what he done to our father Adam. He swore by Allah, I am indeed a sincere advisor. By that time, they had decided to flee with their religion. They chose Allah over the lifestyle that they had. Remember what I said earlier, they came from a wealthy, rich background. They gave all of that up. For what? 
for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you leave something for Allah's cause, does Allah abandon you, brothers and sisters? And once you've now, or once they isolated themselves from the filth and the evil in their time, and whatever those people were doing, they headed towards the cave. What did Allah Azza do? He showered them with His mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took control of their affairs. Allah Azza wa took it into His own hands. They slept and they didn't wake up except hundreds of years later. They wake up, we're hungry. Someone go and grab us some food and be careful that you're not caught. Not realizing that hundreds of years have gone past. After they came to the city, the people realized that it's them. And from that point on, they lived a life of izzah and karam. Allah promised that He would take care of everything. He would take control of their affairs. All of this is after what? They done the right thing. So my brothers and my sisters, I don't know which haram you're involved in. It could be a haram job. It could be a haram relationship. And you're in between two minds. I don't know. I'm going to lose out on a lot. Allah will take care of everything.